Hello, welcome back. It's uh, still Wednesday, February the 12th. My guest in this segment is John Farquharson, a frequent guest and uh, also had his own show a while back. And John, what are we going to be talking about? Well, I'd like to, two white guys, okay, I'd like two white guys to talk about the uh, situation with the Wet'suwet'en okay. people, okay? Now, I just want to butt in, I'll say, I think John and I want the same stuff, like a good world and, you know, save the planet and a happy life for everybody but we don't agree on how to get there, usually. Okay, well, you know, so, you know, you've been looking outside your window and you see what's going on on the bridge and in front of the legislature. And uh, what are the, you know, what are the two biggest issues? What are the, what's the big issue here, or the biggest issues here? Um, in terms of this pipeline? Yeah. <clears throat> to me, the two biggest issues are the lack of democracy the role of the media, and I guess a third one is the project is insane because we can't continue with expansion of fossil fuels. Okay, so let's to see me, what those we, are the issues. Yeah. yeah, so for me it's, it's the issue of a just transition to a low carbon economy. So maybe we have some overlap there between addressing climate change and doing it in a way that uh, constitutes a just transition. Yeah. And the other, but probably almost as equal to that and maybe even bigger for me, is indigenous poverty, and uh, for me, this is so much of what this, uh, what's been going on in the last little bit here, uh, is all about indigenous po poverty, and how do we how do we address indigenous poverty? And indigenous poverty is just shameful in terms of uh, of Canada, and so that's those are the two issues that came you know to my mind, and. Um, what I was struck by is, uh, and I'm not speaking, I'm not standing in solidarity with the, uh, you know, the Wet'suwet'en uh, majority uh, in terms of band chiefs who the overwhelming majority agreed with uh, the pipeline. Okay, <laughs> but I'll, there's a big asterisk there, so after you've finished Well, all the pipeline goes through several indigenous uh, territories, right? And my understanding is that there was 20 band councils, uh, and all of them in, are on board. And of the six... Well, uh, on board in quotation marks. They've signed on yes. in agreement. Yes. Okay? Yes. Uh, many of them, I think the overwhelming majority, have signed mutual benefit agreements. Okay? I don't know. But well, the reason they do that is because they're tired of being poor. Okay? They're tired of yes. managing poverty. They want to manage, my understanding is that many of them want to manage wealth. Okay. And they see this as, an, okay, as a I'll way I'll put of, a different spin yeah, on it. <clears throat> it's extortion, basically, by the oil industry, and they're famous, okay. they do it around the world. They come in with their friends in government, <clears throat> and they say, this pipeline is going through your territory, whether you like it or not. That's the message. Do you want to sign on? Because if you sign on, we'll give you a couple of million bucks and we'll give you jobs. So they do sign on, because to not sign on means the pipeline happens anyways, and they get nothing. And then the media and the politicians mm -hmm. and the industry go around saying, hey, everybody signed on. Well, yeah, everybody signed on, but that's only a part of the story. And to me, that telling only a part of a, a story that important is a lie, and we're being lied to about that. Okay, so what you're claiming is that all of these chiefs uh, signed on, uh, they were extorted to sign on. Yeah, none to some the, extent they were extorted. Maybe so some of, weren't. Maybe none some of them did, did it freely. Yeah. I'm sure, but if we go beyond that, the real issue is, yes, let's have jobs and, and a good life for everybody, but it, why does it have to be with something so insane as a fracked gas pipeline, which is going to be so poisonous to the province? Yeah. Why that? I mean, we can do better, and wouldn't you agree that if we could do better, I'm not sure where for we're everybody. Gonna, well, I'm just not wind, sure. Yeah, solar, I, yeah, wind, solar, housing. Yeah, we need it. So we need a. Well, have you seen the the state of housing for for indigenous it's nations? A, yeah, I How, haven't. But okay. from what I hear, it's. I not just don't great. see on the immediate horizon, wind farms and solar panels are going to lift indigenous people out of poverty. What I see on the horizon immediately, right now is being part of a just transition to a low carbon economy. Why shouldn't they participate? Why shouldn't indigenous people have an equal opportunity to get out of poverty? Well, it's an equal opportunity to poison everything. Why can't there be an equal opportunity 
to do something better well, it's, you know, and, and still <coughs> generate income. Well, I mean, it's, easy for, it's easy for us to say we're not poor. It's easy for us to say, well, it's easy for us to say. You're not poor. What? Don't include me in your wealth. <laughs> well, I mean, it's easy to say to the chiefs that have signed on, saying, oh, I'm sorry, you're just going to have to wait your turn. I know you're just no, on I'm the No, I'm not cusp. saying that. What I'm saying is, let's bring the Bank of Canada into play. Let's put a huge amount of money into housing for this province, which is a crisis, mm -hmm. and create jobs for everybody. Yeah. It, for it doing something like that, and, and also, not only that, but build the housing in as environmentally friendly a way as mm -hmm. we possibly can. Yeah. Let's just change things around. The money is there. We've got the Bank of Canada, which can come into play <clears throat> and give us the money we need to do the things we have to do that are more positive. And yeah, the First Nations and everybody else should be able to get a part of it. Instead, all the wealth flows to the people at the top, who are the oh. owners of these damn companies, okay. and the rest of us are getting killed. Yeah, I get, I, I'm just looking at these guys who are in the majority of, you know, of, of, uh, of the Wetsu, what, sorry, <laughs> the, the uh, Wetsu, Wetsun, Wetsun, oh boy, Wetsu, Wetsun people. You know, I've heard right? it pronounced so many different ways. I, I wish mean, I'm somebody, I, I heard one <coughs> or two First Nations people pronounce it, and they do it in a little different way than everybody else, and that's, I'm sure, the right way, but. Okay, so I'm just yeah. going to go Wetsu, Wetsun. I don't know, I just, uh, I, I understand what you're saying. I just, that's not on the table right now, okay? And we could wait one year, two years, five years, 10 years, 15, 20 years for the bank to step in. But we could do it tomorrow. What's on the table is death. That's what that pipeline is, it's well, death. No, I think it's part of a just transition to a low carbon economy. So I say, say, uh, what kills me is to see the nation torn apart you see various indigenous nations exactly. torn apart, okay? Exactly. That's the part that really, you know, gets to, uh, you know, And there's nobody heart. better at tearing apart <coughs> than the oil industry. I mean, they are masters. They've done it around the world. They, you know, you can just imagine yeah. the people they bring in. Hey, man, he's torn apart Nigeria and Uganda. Let's yeah. bring him into Canada. He'll do a great job here. And they come in and they do it. I mean, yeah. they're, they're, ugh. Well, one of the things that I think is at the, out of the heart of the conflict, as we all know, is the conflict between hereditary chiefs and elected chiefs. And uh, they're at odds with one another. You've got, you know, the overwhelming majority of hereditary chiefs oppose the pipeline. You've got the overwhelming majority of elected chiefs, duly elected chiefs, in favor of it. Well, but again, in favor meaning they've signed they on. They signed but on. Remember, okay, Jack, maybe somebody on. had a gun to their head. I don't exactly. know. Exactly. Okay, I wasn't there. And neither present. was I. Okay, so you weren't there. I wasn't there. But we should, But from what I've, heard, I've I've heard a few of them speak. <laughs> Only a few because the you know, the corporate media won't tell us this. But that's basically what they said. Okay. That, I'm quoting what the guy said. He said, "We were told this pipeline is going through." Yeah, okay, the one so, I heard was uh, the one you know, we I signed heard was, on because it was going through anyways, and if we didn't, we wouldn't get anything. Yeah, the one I listened to was the one who said, "We're tired of managing poverty. We want to manage wealth." Yes, they I agree with that They mentioned nothing too. about extortion. They mentioned nothing about a gun to yeah. their head. They didn't mention that at all. So maybe they were. It's sworn just to I, I just think thing. that if that's the issue, we can do so much better for everybody than this, you know, murderous project. Because I mean. You talk about a just transition to a low carbon world. Yeah, 50 years ago that made sense, but it's too late. It, it, we face catastrophe. Jack, I know we face catastrophe. Okay? So why do you want a new pipeline? Because that's what's that's what's on that's what's on the table. Yeah. Look at the look at the uh, w what's going to change. I think a lot of this uh, equation is when the Trans Mountain uh, pipeline gets. So right now it's almost clear all of its regulatory hurdles, the Trans Mountain, uh, twinning of the Trans Mountain Pipeline, and um, the government will probably sell it to a First Nations group within this year, okay? And so when, and there's apparently three First Nations groups sort of in the lineup. Uh, one of the larger ones I think is called Project Reconciliation, and they may well end up being the ones who are gonna buy 50%. So I. I, I'm just not sure how we, how we can deny participation by First Nations in uh, a way to lift themselves out of poverty. Well, I see that pipeline as being totally worthless. I mean, if they sell it to the First Nations, they'll get saddled with billions of dollars in debt 
on a pipeline that's never going to pay for itself. Okay, well, uh, okay, well. I mean, uh, let, why been, can't they be invest, put that money into something great for the future? I have more faith in the be. indigenous people to go in and assess the v financial viability of a, uh, of a pipeline. I have tremendous faith in their ability to do that. They are smart people, okay? If they don't have the uh, uh, wherewithal within, they can hire on, okay? I, I, I think they can do it. I think they have that capacity. And um, when they do purchase the pipeline, then I think it's gonna change uh, the uh, landscape uh, significantly. Because it's gonna be very difficult for people to, for, you know, for white people to speak on behalf of all indigenous people when you've got a huge, uh, possibly a majority, favoring participation in the economy, favoring getting themselves out of poverty. Uh, it's like investing in Edsel. <laughs> I don't think, well, no, it's investing Nobody in Nobody would even know what, the, what an Edsel is, but let's, it wasn't a good we're investment. Going, we're going too far back. Yeah. Okay, uh, sh shall we move on to something else? <laughs> or we can carry on here, it's up to you. Well, again, it's, it's uh, like I say, it's a way out of poverty, and I salute them, and, uh, it, and uh, they're in the majority, the, you know, the hereditary chiefs are in the minority, and, you know, like, with respect, I mean, you know, forms of... I don't agree with that either, but... Well, they are. You look at who signed... Okay, but if you want to go the there... They are in the majority. The, the band councils represent the reserve land. They manage the reserve land. They are the government of the reserve mm -hmm. land. The traditional lands fall under the governance of the hereditary chiefs. I know that's the way it's been. I understand that so, that is the traditional I mean, way. It's, it is the hereditary chiefs here who do speak for that land. Well, I, I So know. it doesn't matter, really. It's like, Sure it does. Because it's, well, it's like the oil companies came through mm. and said, well, yeah, the province of BC is the one who has the right to okay. make environmental law, but we'll sign an agreement with Victoria okay. and Saanich. Okay, well, so you've got... Exactly okay, so you've got... You know, you've got uh, levels of poverty th that are through the roof, okay? And Everywhere. Well, <clears throat> on reserves, off reserves, in terms of indigenous peoples, right? And maybe it's time to, for, for an alternative form of government to, uh, uh, look, uh, to manage traditional lands. Maybe if you had the band chiefs, the elected folks, managing not just the reserve, but the traditional, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the unceded territory, maybe that would get them out of poverty. Maybe the hereditary form of government has, you know, it's been successful for centuries, okay? Maybe it's no longer an effective way of seeing the world in today's world. Maybe, you know, sort of democratic. I'm shaking my head, but I don't agree, but, but okay. I don't want to go like this. <laughs> well, you know, maybe it's time for a change. Yeah. It's definitely time for a change. Okay. That I agree with you 100%. Not necessarily the change you want, but yes, it is time for a change. And I would love to see some big changes in our society. You're going to, and you're going to see... Yeah, the, I'd like uh, to see democracy. Well, you're going to see the TMX purchased by uh, uh, First Nations group. That's going to change things significantly. Yeah. How much time we have left? We're out of time. Oh. <laughs> we don't have time to talk about Pete Buttigieg and Bernie Sanders, but... <sighs> That fight continues too. John, thank you very much. My pleasure. Yeah. And thanks for watching this segment of Citizens Forum.